Good morning. It's Halloween 2024. Welcome to my hobby bench and I'm going to continue with part five of the disassembly of this Pegasus engine UJP and today's video is basically going to be me taking the cylinders off of each of the crankcase here and hopefully you know the pistons and anything else there and hopefully we'll get to the point where we'll be able to see what the real issue is here with this engine because as you saw it doesn't even turn over at all yet so I've got I believe this is a 2.5 millimeter hex key L shape but I've got it cut down so that it can yeah I know it's black there cut down so it can fit inside the, the head with full engagement and just be just beneath the fins here So it's important to get full engagement. So they don't have any issues with stripping the heads out. Unfortunately, I don't think you can even get a straight shot in here with a ground tip. And this is when you need your ball so you can kind of get at that angle, stay at that angle and actually run this thing out. So this is cylinder number four. Let me get the lid off number four off. Now, in theory, what's gonna happen is here, we'll see the piston exposed and all that good stuff. If the engine would rotate over, we would see that we could access the uh, connecting rods because the connecting rods have to come off to actually fully disassemble this engine. The fact that the engine doesn't turn over is you know, the big question here and the big issue as to what is going on there and I don't think we're going to see, understand why that is until I get the fourth sleeve off or fourth cylinder I should say, not sleeve. So here's sleeve, cylinder, not sleeve, cylinder number one off. And this could be a kind of a problem here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that piston pin out here or not. I think I need my pick to try to get that. Put my pick in here. Try to get this little Teflon doohickey out. Hmm. That's not wanting to come out that side. pushing on that directly while the ring the ring rotates in there. Okay, I guess what I'm going to end up having to do here is just continue taking these uh, other cylinders off. So now this is three, even though I'm left-handed, so I'm not... <laughs> I've got to rotate this thing around here.
while I'm here before I forget we'll drop these push rod seals in there. Something a little weightier. under there but all right so now we have these two things in the exact same orientation and I still can't turn the prop over or the connect or connect the crankshaft over which of course I knew I wasn't going to be able to turn it over after just doing that anyway but this is quite interesting I'm really hoping that something here enables me to figure out why this thing is just locked up like this. I may have to resort to just heating it up. I mean, this was just run recently, so it shouldn't be like sludge built up causing it. There's some kind of mechanical failure in here apparently. I think that's the one I already broke loose. And end up eventually having to put that um, woodruff key back back in here, and the prop washer and all that stuff on there to maybe even a prop to get it to rotate. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to rotate it just by the shaft. I don't have enough grip there. Apologize for those of you that have a short attention span and that this seems like a long process, but short attention span or not, this is what it takes. flashlight. <laughs> Not really seeing anything yet. Um, these push rod seals out. Pause the video here for a few moments while I uh, get some other tools. Okay, I'm back here now. Um, I put the Woodruff key on here. And the prop hub. And really all I did was just kind of started kind of rotating it through a little bit. I'm just going to put this on here real quick just to maybe keep that from wanting to come off so much. Now in hindsight, I probably should have done this before I took the sleeves off, or the cylinders off, because now it seems like it's free, but you know, because the sleeves are not here to guide it, 
So it's it's functioning here. It's maybe I, and and so here I'm at the quandary of you know I could easily put the cylinders back on and rotate it through and see. Um, I don't really want to go through the effort of putting the heads back on and put all of it back together now, but I'm going to put these sleeves back on, I believe. And secure them with a couple of screws. A screw in each opposing corner just enough to hold it in place and then rotate it through and see if I hear anything. Because the little bit of movement I just had there. And it was weird, I did it off, I didn't have the camera turned on, and I just kind of started rocking that thing, and all of a sudden it just freed up. I heard no sound, no crunching sound, nothing at all. It just kind of freed up, like, it's like, why didn't you just turn me over to begin with? Well, obviously I didn't turn it over in the initial stages, because it felt like there was something really mechanically not right with this. So the last thing I want to do was well, force, let's do this, let's put this side on next. So I'm to squeeze this ring. So the good news here is that there may not be anything majorly wrong with this engine. Which is obviously what we're hoping for. Best case scenario. With the exception of trying to get that screw out in the front housing with the broken off ball in it. what would cause it to just stop running and make a weird noise is beyond me. I didn't see any loose balls, at least initially here, just rolling around in the crankcase. Very time consuming process just to put this thing back together enough so that we can just rotate it through. But I, this is required to better understand what's going on, I think. As I sit here and do this, I'm just trying to think in my head what could possibly have just caused. Because JP made it sound like he told me that. He, it stopped running and he heard like a mechanical grinding or some kind of a mechanical sound like something gave way. Now if I can just rotate this thing over my hand and feel and hear that, then that might go a long way towards See right now. I'm not feeling or hearing anything. This just looks looks fine. Hmm. All right. So we're to the point now where I don't know that there's really anything mechanically wrong with this engine. Now, when I had these cylinders off, I had some issues trying to get that piston pin or the wrist pin out. 
of the one I tried. What I'm going to end up having to do is I got one of these ground drivers, a small one, and when I take this apart again, I'll to take the connecting rods off and get those the connecting rod piston assembly off. Then I'll probably deal with the extraction of the piston pin at that time, or maybe it'd be easier if I do it while it's still attached and just heat it up with some oil and use a little punch or the end of a ball driver and just slide it through. It should come right out if it gets heated up, but I think it just requires a little bit of heat to do that. Right now, this thing is rotating freely and I don't hear, feel, feel or hear anything. It doesn't feel right. I mean, it feels smooth actually. <laughs> so, look at this here. I'm not hearing any any bad bearings or anything. It just seems really happy. What happened? I don't know. I wasn't there when JP experienced what he experienced, so I'm not sure what happened. But I don't know that I'm going to go any further until JP sees this video and advises me on what he'd like me to continue doing. So that's the end of this video at this time.